I recently realized that we haven't really been putting our five minute sonar videos on our YouTube page. My bad. We're going to start putting them on there about every week just to start building that library up, that section of our YouTube channel at Core Ultrasound. Now, some of these videos are going to be a little bit on the old side, but if they haven't been updated, it either means that number one, the data is still good in them, or number two, I just haven't had time to get around to it. So we're slowly going through these and we're updating these, but we really want to share with you all, all those five minute Sona videos that we have. Now, briefly, if you don't know what they are, what our five minute Sona videos are, are really quick, just short lectures around five minutes, most of them are five minutes or less, where we kind of just show you the basics of how to do a specific examination. We're not going to talk about every scenario. We're not going to talk about all of the evidence, when to use it. We're going to assume that you already want to use this and you just want a refresher or a quick primer on specifically how to do that examination. So check out the video and let me know what you think. In this video, we are going to discuss how to use your ultrasound to diagnose a viral pneumonia. There are many different probes you can use, but the curvilinear probe is going to be the one that's going to give you the highest resolution and best looking image. Now, as far as where to scan your patient, what I usually do is divide the patient's lungs into basically three zones per side, anterior, lateral, and posterior. This posterior area is probably the most important. Most pneumonias are going to be in the lower lobe, which is represented back here in this area. You can't image through the scapula, but that's okay. You're going to still get a good amount of that lower lobe. Now, as far as what to look for, I place a probe with a probe marker facing up on the patient's chest. That'll give me a rib and cross section, a rib and cross section, and the pleural line. What I'm doing is I want to know, is this white line like this, or is there anything coming off of it? Is there any dips in it? Is there anything other than this? This would be a lung that would be, for all intents and purposes, normal. Now, as far as scanning the patient, what I usually do is I'll place the probe with the probe marker facing up, and then I'll lawnmower back and forth along the entire anterior lateral and posterior thoracic wall. And notice this whole time, I'm able to look at multiple rib spaces, looking at this white line, the white pleural line, and I wanna know, is there anything different about that white line? Now remember, the most important part is this posterior area. So I'll go down until I know that I'm right at the bottom. So here I've identified the spleen. So I know if I go a couple of rib spaces or maybe one rib space above the spleen, I am in the most dependent portion of the thorax. And then what I'll do is just basically fan back and forth, just like you see here, always making sure to keep an eye on that pleural line. Remember, the lung goes all the way up here. Now don't forget to look here in between the scapula and the spine, there's still lung up there. Now let's say you get to a spot right here and you're scanning through and you've identified a little area that has something weird in it. So some kind of like pleural line abnormality right about here. And of course in this patient, everything's normal, but let's say that off of this pleural line, you see a couple of focal B lines. What I'll do here is I'll turn the transducer transverse in between and look in that intercostal space to better delineate any pathology that I might see there. I'm going to take a brief pause here just to let you know that all of our content is on the coreultrasound.com website. That is Ultrasound Podcast, 5 Minutes Sono, Ultrasound of the Week, Clip Bank, and we also have our courses page where we have the Core Ultrasound Fundamentals and Core Ultrasound Question Bank where you have 3,200 questions with feedback including at narrative videos explaining the question. Check it out and back to your video. Now let's talk about the actual findings of viral pneumonia. Now we don't have a whole lot of data out there, but we have some. In influenza, you'll see scattered and confluent B lines, as well as consolidations of various sizes. When you look at the literature for bronchiolitis, which is usually caused by RSV, you'll see those two things, plus an irregular or thickened pleural line, and you might actually see some air bronchograms with bronchiolitis. That's where you have little white dots within the subpleural consolidation. And I'm going to show you what that looks like in a bit. Now for COVID-19, which is one of the newer problems that we're having, there has been two studies that have been thus far published, and they mention findings consistent with other viral pneumonias. A scattered confluent B lines, irregular thick and pleural lined, consolidations of various sizes, but they also mentioned that there might be a low colored Doppler flow within the consolidations, 
plus or minus these air bronchograms. And one of the studies also mentions localized pleural effusions around the subpleural consolidations. Now, what is almost completely all the time absent with a viral pneumonia is the presence of a pleural effusion. Now, if you have a patient with a bacterial pneumonia, they often have a small pleural effusion, but with viral pneumonias, no pleural effusions. This is what a viral pneumonia looks like. This one specifically is influenza. So you can see here this pleural line that normally we want to see a nice crisp white line. We see a big dip in it right here. This is a subpleural consolidation. You see how there's like these little white thingies in here? Those are called air bronchograms. So you can see these with or without air bronchograms. And then over here, we're having some focal beelines surrounding this area of consolidation. Here's another example. We have a very irregular pleural line, very lumpy bumpy with a small subpleural consolidation right there. Now, if you want to, you can definitely use a linear transducer well to get a better view but to be honest, most of the time I'm using a curvilinear transducer. In this example of bronchiolitis, we can see that there's an irregular pleural line and a couple of B lines, and maybe even a small subpleural consolidation there and over here. Now to recap, the main findings in a viral pneumonia are gonna be scattered or confluent B lines. You're gonna see an irregular or thickened pleural line, and you might see consolidations of various sizes, plus or minus air bronchograms. That's it for this five minute Sono video. If you want more of these, check out coreultrasound.com. Hopefully that was helpful for you all. I can't wait to hear from you soon and happy scanning.